What's up, everybody? Thank you for attending Higher Reasonings today. I am Zero. I'm Zero Knight. Uh, you can catch me on on Facebook at uh, Zero Knight. You can catch me here on TikTok, you know, as you can see, Zero Knight 469. So today what I'm going to be talking about with you guys is the connection between Heka, spiritual science, and Hekate, or Heket as they pronounce it in you know the northern areas of the planet and what she where she comes from i guess the, the idea and the concept of where she originates right <clears throat> so in ancient kemet in ancient kush right there there was an explanation of the the dualistic halves of everything of energies right as heka and heket just like they have Amun, the hidden, and Amunet, the revealed. Hekai and Heket are basically essentially the same thing. They're just from an older time period, right? So it's important that you understand that these are not describing people, flesh and blood people. They're describing entities vibrating on a higher mental and spiritual level than physicality, okay? So they don't die. They just regenerate, right? Because ideas, concepts, thoughts, um, what, um, what else is there? Uh, hypotheses, you know, all these things are etheric in nature. They don't have a physical form until you give them a physical form by believing in them. And again, to believe means to cleave apart, to be cleaved apart, right? You've taken this thing apart from the ethereal and put it into the physical, right? So Heka is just representative of the things unseen, right? The original, right? The, the chaotic waters of the noon from which everything springs forth. Heket, H-E-K-K-E-T, right? Because in ancient Kemetic, ancient uh, Kushite, and I believe, I might be wrong, but ancient Phoenician uh, script, when they would write, or even when they would talk, they would put the N-T or just the T on the end of a word in order to signify that it is the feminine aspect of a certain idea or force, if you will. <clears throat> so Heka and Heket are essentially night and day. She is the revealed, he is the hidden, right? Creator of the revealed, creator of the hidden, right? They work together to produce what you perceive as reality. Again, you are the observer and the observed. You are yourself looking in the mirror, but you are also that mirror's reflection looking back at you. You are the observer observing the observed. That's what this all is, okay? So in the Wiccan, or I guess you'd call it, you know, Northern uh, spiritual understandings, they typically only reference Hecate, Hecate, right? But she too has a masculine counterpart. His name is Aetes. And what Aetes represents is the sun. You see, it's in the North. So the aspects and what they represent, you know, are reversed, right? The same way the seasons are. So in the North, Heket is the moon and the Aetis is the sun. Whereas down south, Heka is the sun and er, uh, Heka is the moon and Heket is the, is the sun. Okay? So you just switch. But essentially, it's the same knowledge base. And again, we understand this and know this because if you ask any of the people from Norselands or any people who even practice the Wicca or the Wiccan tradition and they're actually up on their stuff and they know their history, they'll tell you where they came from. Right? The Norse people come from the Dravidians who come from the Druids who come from uh they come from the Druids who come from the Dravidians who come from India and the Indian you know that belief system again springs right out of Africa see that's why it's important to understand that all of these different magic systems all they're really doing is stepping down right the knowledge trying to make the knowledge more local and more locally understandable to where it is their people migrated to and ended up okay because you got to understand it the that what real magic and what this real knowledge is is the understanding of how your mentality and your spirit and your being and action speaks you know what i'm saying all of that lines up with nature right so it makes sense that if you live in a different part of the world then you're going to start to assign different energies to different ideas Okay, you got different timings, different seasons, different things that grow there, you know what I'm saying, different animals, all that. So that's all that is. You know, there's no reason to go around uh, 
telling somebody if you if you practice you know the ancient comedic traditions telling someone who practices wicca or even the norse traditions that they're evil or they're mad or they stole your shit no ask them where it comes from they'll tell you right and that's again that's just another one of those traps that leads everybody into this this low vibrational hate cycle that keeps you from understanding that that ultimate truth that all truth you know and that's what you're really trying to get to with all of this all of this studying all of this uh incantations all of this crystal work all this shadow work all this light work you know you're trying to repair that light cone in order for you to actually see what's there you can't do that as long as you're distracted and confused with nonsense all day long which is exactly where they try to keep you because they can profit off of that right because that's where you pull energy out of is the chaos that's how we all got here the chaotic waters of the moon coalesce right they begin to cool down as they step down and then they form two Right? Feminine, masculine. And then under the order, right, of Ma'at, the balance, you get the rest of these energy streams that create all these different forms of life and reality and, and all of that. Okay? So it's important to understand that the first thing that you must address when you're talking to somebody who might be of a different traditional path than you, spiritually speaking, Try to understand the similarities instead of trying to think of a way to be at odds with this person because you're honestly just being at odds with yourself under a different facet of this diamond that we call the all understanding, right? So take that opportunity to learn a little bit from that person, maybe even teach that person. They might not know something about the, the mystic traditions that you do. They might, you know what I'm saying, know something that you don't. So, <clears throat> yeah. So next thing I want to talk about too, uh, just because basically the time and you know what I'm saying season that it is, I think is a lot of people need to learn to actually visualize mentally, right? And, and a good way to do this, I kind of just already touched on it, is by looking into a mirror, right? For the same amount of time that you would look at a television screen for or your phone screen for, right? Because when you're looking at these television screens and phone screens, what they're doing, again, you got to remember, it's a black mirror. What this black mirror is used for in ancient times were to communicate with your subconscious, right? The same way a silver mirror or a glass mirror, a regular mirror, you know, is used to communicate with your physical self, right? And even that on, on, on a very mental level, very, very subdued level, you're communicating with yourself, even in that, that regular physical mirror. But the black mirror is specifically for diving into your subconscious, right and you do that with images so it's important that people learn to visualize for themselves in their heads because how many times you you can there's some of y'all out here right watching right now that can probably think of a movie you've seen right and see those scenes in your head but you couldn't do that with the image of yourself and that's a problem that means that someone else is controlling your mind you see what i mean they're not like you know making you walk like a zombie or whatever all the cartoon shit but what they're doing is controlling what you buy what you think about, how you feel, where you go, like that's mind control. Okay, they can control the image of that you have of yourself, and that's where you. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's where you got to start. Okay, you got to start by looking into this mirror and starting to readjust how you see yourself, and that will slowly or rapidly, depending on how much work you put into this, start to change the way that you visually and intellectually and spiritually affect your own life. Right. So instead of watching, you know, what I'm saying rap videos, instead of watching action movies, instead of watching rom coms, okay, definitely stay away from goddamn Roman romantic comedies. Stay away from those. They're lies. They mess your head all up. Look what they did to a whole couple of generations of females and dudes. Everybody's out here all nuts now. So that self confirmation and the self acknowledgement aspect of what I'm I'm saying to do, you know, looking in this mirror, it just it helps to build that positive image of yourself inside the actual thought space, right? So that you control what you do, what you feel, what you look at, what you, you know, pay attention to, okay? So using that feedback loop of you looking in the mirror, feeding positive energy to that mirror, you're feeding it back to yourself and it's just going to keep building. It's a positive energy feedback loop, okay? And this will help you develop the sense and the understanding of how to actually create your etheric body or body, right? So once again, 
understand that as long